From the campus of Minneapolis Southwest High School, we welcome you to the Twin Cities Boys Championship game. It's our last broadcast of the season, and we're gonna see uh, some new players. Familiar team on one end, and a brand new entry on the other. The Minneapolis Southwest Lakers host the St. Paul Johnson Governors. Hello everyone, I'm Mike Beaton. Thank you for joining us. Minneapolis Southwest coming in at 15 and 11. A huge turnaround from last year when they finished eight and 19. And a lot of that has to do with Demetrius Caddy, their point guard who runs the offense and I've been told has a strong work ethic. And that has bled over to the rest of the team. An undersized group, but had a, some very dramatic wins this season and that allowed them to host this event for the first time in 30 years. St. Paul Johnson, a regular participant in this series. They've had some memorable matchups over the years. They had a strong rivalry with Washburn going back to the last couple of years, but they get a new opponent in Southwest, but a renewed vigor as well. A little under the radar this year, De La Salle, the favorite to win in Class 3A, but Johnson ranked number eight, coming in with a 17 and seven record. Dominated St. Paul City Conference play, lost their first game of the year to Central. Since then, all W's as the team once again buys into the philosophy of head coach Vernon Simmons. We'll talk more about the matchups and section implications in a moment. Here are the keys to the game for the teams. For St. Paul Johnson, defense is key as always. That's their motto. Rebounding strong and good balance in their scoring. If they can get four or five players in double digits, they're in good position. If they have trouble spreading the ball around, Minneapolis Southwest could steal one more win before playoffs begin. For the Southwest Lakers, structured offense and defense will be their key. If they ad-lib too much or if things go awry, Johnson could run away with this. They'll want to stay disciplined. As a result, Johnson has that pedigree. They won a state tournament title in 2010. Got to the semis last year, finished third. They have a ton of experience. They expect this, and so you have to face a very strong history with Johnson's pedigree, as we mentioned, and valuing the dribble as a result. Making sure their offensive possessions are clean, making sure their dribbles are clean. They don't want to commit anything silly, otherwise Johnson will run away and score another win against a quality 4A opponent. Starting lineups are coming up in a moment. Stick around. This is the Twin Cities Boys Basketball Championship on TSB Television. Welcome back to Minneapolis Southwest High School. Let's take a quick look at the starting five for both teams. For the visiting St. Paul Johnson Governors, Pierre Conwell, number one, six foot one forward, junior. Number two, Travis Sheedslock, six foot senior guard. Number three, Jalen Mobley, 5'11", sophomore guard. Number five, Washington smith Pugh, 6'3", senior forward. And number 11, Robert Shatter, Shadard, 6'1", senior forward. Minneapolis Southwest will start number 10, Demetrius Caddy, 5'10", senior guard. Number 11, Akeem Smith, 5'10", junior guard. Number 13, Tyler Porch, 6'3", senior forward. Number 21, Cam Ross, 6'3", junior forward. And number 23, Amon Brodek, 6'2", senior guard. Players to watch for both teams. St. Paul Johnson, Quashingham Smith, Pugh, averaging a double-double this season. Yeah, leads St. Paul City Conference in scoring at 17.1 points per game. We talked about Demetrius Caddy and his impressive season for the Southwest Lakers. He averages 15.7 points per game. Cam Ross, who's also starting, 13.3 points per game to back him up. Pierre Conwell, number one for Johnson, the backup option on offense, 15.4 points per game. No rankings, no section implications on the line, just some pride. St. Paul Johnson has already been seated. They will go into their section as the number one seed. We mentioned De La Salle, the heavy favorite to win this year in the Class 3 state championship, but we've seen how unpredictable boys basketball can be, so it's never a guarantee. Minneapolis Southwest has a tough prospect just to get out of their section. 
seven of the eight teams in section 64A have a record of 500 or better. That tells you just how tough getting out of that section is going to be. You've got Edina, you've got Hopkins, you've got Minnetonka, a lot of heavy players out there. So for Minneapolis Southwest, it'd be a tall task. But again, this is a considerable turnaround from where they were a year ago. Southwest got this game because they finished the Minneapolis City Conference tied with the Washburn Millers and the tiebreaker rule goes to the team with the longer gap that obviously was Southwest with Washburn having played in this game several times so they got the nod even though both teams finished with a 9-3 conference mark. St. Paul Johnson beat Highland Park earlier this week in a game that des decided the right to represent St. Paul in this year's championship game. No tiebreaker procedure necessary. It was winner take all and Johnson pulled through. Once again, that consistent philosophy instilled by head coach Vernon Simmons. It's a bit unorthodox, but it's worked to success in that program. Many state tournament appearances, that state tournament title back in 2010. A lot of history with Vernon Simmons and the job he has done. Minneapolis Southwest will wear the purple jerseys, Johnson wearing the white jerseys, and the 2013 Twin Cities Boys Championship is underway. Southwest with the first possession, this is Demetrius Caddy. Feeds it to Akeem Smith. Let's look at Amon Brodeck. Conwell anticipating the pass and intercepts the steal, intercepts the skip, I should say. Getting the layup is quashing Smith Pugh. Season high is 28. Johnson looking to add to their winning streak. Southwest looking to end their season on a winning note before they start section play. Johnson with another steal. And posting up, almost getting the layup, was Robert Chatard, and he will shoot free throws. Chatard averaging 5.8 points per game this season. His season high is 12. And you'll hear just how accurate the free throws are th this afternoon. Chatard makes both. Johnson out to a quick 4-0 lead in the first 40 seconds. Southwest trying to push the ball up again. Johnson was waiting for that. Quashing of Smith Pugue on the fast break, and the finger roll is good. A little under the weather, as you may have noticed, so. I don't have the energy I use. I normally do. Uh, just bear with us here. No putback for Southwest. And it's picked up by Jalen Mobley on the rebound. And he loses the ball, but it was deflected by Southwest. Mobley off the give and go. Too strong, but the pick up by Sheetslog. He losing the losing the ball to 13, Tyler Porch. And here is Caddy, point guard who has instilled such a heavy foundation on the Southwest team. Anchored them to get to this point. Another steal by Johnson, Pierre Conwell. They're playing in your face, they're playing up tempo, and they're up to an eight nothing lead. Pierre Conwell gets on the board, and we have a timeout with 16.25 remaining in the first half. Southwest is yet to score. Johnson has scored the first eight points. Speaking of Johnson, like we said, we're going to talk a lot about sections today because this is the final regular season game before section playoffs begin. St. Paul Johnson in section 4-3A got the top seed. They will play South St. Paul next Friday. Figures to win that contest. And they could very well face Highland Park again for the right to play in the state tournament. Both teams have played each other very close. Highland Park, the two seed in that section. St. Paul Central, the three seed. Central, the only team to beat Johnson in conference play. You've got another St. Paul school in Harding, but not expected to contend as much. Highland and Harding will go at it on Friday, and then we... First, 
Opening round, of course, always played at the highest seed site. And then from then, it's going to be hosted at St. Paul, Washington. So Johnson could very well pave their way to another state tournament appearance if the cards go their way. We'll talk more about them later. Here's Cam Ross, a strong offensive player. And here's number 11, Akeem Smith, caddy. Finds his target, Amon Brodek. Brodek under duress. Gets rid of it, finds Porch. Traveling violation, Porch hit the deck. Johnson had a bit of a rocky start this year. Hovered around the 500 mark for the uh, first month or so. and then worked their way back up the rankings in Class 3A with a strong performance in St. Paul City Conference play, quashing smith Pugue on the baseline drive. He has six of Johnson's 10 points. Southwest has yet to get on the board. Neither team seen, had seen each other before today, so neither school really could scout each other in advance. Johnson usually doesn't scout anyway. Sheets log with the steal and then finds his target. He couldn't get up because that would be a traveling violation, but so he found his pass lying on the floor. And beating his coverage forward the bucket, Robert Chetard. He's up to four. Johnson scoring the first 12 points and alley-oop unsuccessful, but drawing the foul is Amon Brodek. He will shoot free throws. Amon Brodek. 9.8 points per game, season high 21. And nothing seemed to go Southwest way at the moment, but long way to go obviously. Brodex splits and then finally gets Southwest on the board after Johnson opened up to score the first 12. In the game for the Governors, number 25, Justin Langsley. And number a lot of players coming in. Johnson known for their heavy substitution, so we'll get caught up here now. We've got a foul. And I believe it's on Mobley. Number 25 is Justin Langsley for the Governors. Number 42 also in the game, that's Cantrell Kirk. and number 33, Cedric Clark. Demetrius Caddy's call for the charge. Another player stepping in, well actually no Conwell's still out there, but Johnson known for substituting early and often they will use nearly their entire roster before the half ends. Conwell gets fouled, he'll shoot a pair as Johnson was running a series of rotations. Conwell, as we mentioned, 15.4 points per game, season high, 28. Johnson coaching staff appreciates his athleticism, his hard work ethic, and that's really the Johnson philosophy. Not making a name for yourself per se, but contributing to the team goal. Conwell splits, he's up to three. And finally, the first field goal for Southwest goes to Akeem Smith in transition. This is Clark. Now Langsley has the touch. Over to Clark. Ball bounces off his foot, he recovers. Jalen Mobley to reset now. Well, one thing's for sure, you're seeing neither team play slow. That was a bit of an issue last night. With the cleanup is Cantrell Kirk. 
over in Apple Valley in Lakeville South in a South Suburban matchup. Apple Valley won 33-27. The low score was in part because the uh, Lakeville South coach, I'll get to that in a moment, Johnson after the steal on the move again and Kirk with another layup. Johnson pushing their way inside early and often. Here's Caddy, pulls up and not quite. And an over the back foul will be charged to Tyler Porch. 17 to three. This is the score in favor of Johnson. And we're gonna see Sheetslog step in again. So the Lakeville South coach opted to kill the clock, effectively abusing the lack of a shot clock in Minnesota high school ball and it led to the expression of displeasure among Apple Valley's Tyus Jones and the Apple Valley faithful. Posting up and scoring is Langsley. Jones wasn't too upset about it. You know, just saying a win's a win. Cam Ross stepped on the line, so turnover on the Southwest Lakers. But Tyus, in his Twitter speech, said, in his view, the Lakeville South players didn't sign up to camp out and run as much clock as possible. Uh, they signed up to play, and a lot of the Apple Valley fans has another <laughs> give and go to Cantrell Kirk. A lot of Apple Valley fans said they wanted their $7 back. Southwest getting pummeled here in the opening minutes of this first half, and Johnson in transition once more. And look at them just posting up on the boards. Pierre Conwell cleans up, and Southwest is gonna have to call timeout again. 23 to three. Unbelievable start here by Johnson, and they certainly look ready to take on their section and possibly state tournament foes. Let's analyze Southwest section a little more. Seedings had not come out by the time we showed up this afternoon, but Minneapolis Southwest is actually last in her section, but as we said, seven of the eight teams competing have a record of 500 or better. The only team with a losing record is YZ. Among them, you have three teams ranked in the top 10 in the QRF, Edina, Minnetonka, and Hopkins. Hopkins a little weaker than previous years, but we, met, we know how unpredictable the boys' bracket can be. The one sleeper may be St. Louis Park because they've only played one section opponent all year. Edina, Minnetonka, and Hopkins, of course, playing each other in their own conference, getting a silent look at each other as YZ. So most of the late conference will be knocked out by the time state tournament play begins. But that's the situation you have with section play. You no, know, there was discussions in previous years about possibly seeding the tournament in 4A1 through 64, but that died down as did discussions of the shot clock when the economy tanked a few years ago. Back to action here. Southwest trying to stop this run. Caddy can't get the bank. High recoil though, and it falls right into the hands of Cam Knuckles, number five. We're also seeing A.J. Ray making his first appearance on the floor for the Lakers. Here's Ray. No. Rebound, Cedric Clark. He loses the ball. Southwest with numbers. Caddy gets the roll. And that's his first field goal. Johnson pushing. Traveling violation, no basket. Southwest looking forward to this opportunity, hoping to use this as a benchmark to transform into a winning culture. Johnson, not worried about this, but their philosophy has never changed and they never 
worry about who they play next on the schedule. It's always, and we're gonna have a bump foul on Mobley as he ran into Knuckles. Johnson's philosophy is always, the game they're playing now is the most important game of the year. And they'll worry about future opponents ahead of time. Southwest having trouble inbounding. They go all the way to the backcourt, which is allowed off an inbound play, and they'll reset from there. There's Caddy. Hasn't found much yet. Finds Brodek, bullseye. That's actually Cam Ross, but I don't care. I don't think Southwest cares who is scoring right now as long as they're getting points on the board. It's 23-8, but Johnson in transition once more. Chatar with the bucket. No one's gonna be camping today. Johnson pushing the pace as hard as they can. Training the runner is Ross. Southwest finding some shots now. Conwell weaves through traffic, can't score. Chatar with the rebound. And the bunny is too strong. Dead ball rebound to Southwest. See a lot of coaches here doing some scouting, including the St. Thomas Academy. Of course, they hit. could play Johnson, will likely play Johnson in the second round of that section if they get past Till Murray. Knuckles, pump fakes, goes out to A.J. Ray, over to Caddy, top of the key, swish! And now we're seeing Southwest put together some solid possessions. Caddy up to five. Smith Bugue in the game. Back in there for the Governors. As we mentioned, they will substitute early and often. They don't play favorites. Smith Pugue. Short on the three. Rebound Knuckles. All five foot six of them. And that might be generous. Pass was deflected and stolen by Cantrell Kirk. And Johnson, oh my goodness. Well, they finally get it to fall. And that's the first basket for Mitchell McDonald, number 10. Not sure if he's related to the other Mitch McDonald who's here. Getting the kiss off the glass is Cam Ross. Three, short, rebound, Ross. He brings the ball up himself. Caddy, that was close to a steal. But now Southwest is left alone. Bullseye! 20 point lead is now down to nine. Clean block by Cam Ross and Southwest is waking up. But that last offensive possession by the Lakers is an example of what happens when you pursue on defense. It's a high risk, high reward strategy. You can get the steals, but you can also leave yourself open for open looks by your opponent. Swish for Justin Langsley off the offensive board. And Cam Ross having to sub out. Got a little banged up there in that last play. Ross, or Knuckles missing the layup. Johnson. They're gonna keep on pushing. The alley-oop though, too strong. Pierre Conwell was ready, and they lost possession for the Governors. Mobley stepping back in. He'll replace Langsley. Eight minutes, 10 seconds left in the first half. Demetrius Caddy. Over to Brodek, back to Caddy. Launches a three. In and out, offensive rebound. No put back though for Tyler Porch. Johnson, pump fake, drive, and one for Jalen Mobley. That gets him on the board. And 
that play an example of how he's learned to become a leader and play under pressure as a sophomore. He averages 12 and a half points per game, his season high, 21. The coaching staff really impressed with how Mobley has been able to create opportunities for himself and for his teammates as the year has progressed. Can't make the three-point play. Chatter with the offensive rebound and a four-point play for the Governors. 33-18 the score. Johnson still in control. Knuckles, bounce pass. They leave Caddy open for three. Yes! Johnson tried the transition move again. Passing a little off target and a traveling violation. And you saw just how one minor slip up can screw up the timing. Timing no less of an influence in this sport as say in baseball or tennis. If you're not on target, you're not in sync, that can happen. But Southwest has been at least able to contend even though they haven't come within nine after that 23-3 burst to start the game. And that was a tough shot for Amon Brodek in coverage. Smith Pugh on the run, gets the roll. Works his way up to eight. Johnson applying the press again. Brodek finds Knuckles. He pump fakes the three, drives, and gets the roll against Chetard. I thought he was walking straight into a charging trap, but officials said the contact was not indicative of one. Here's Sheetslag. Now to Mobley. Smith Pugue in trouble, use up the dribble, finds his open man. Mitchell McDonald can't hit the three. Rebound Cam Knuckles. There's Caddy. Out to Ross. Back to Caddy again. Akeem Smith now with the ball. And Southwest slowing things down a little bit. Johnson showing zone. Knuckles kicks out. But the pass, I'm not sure what happened. Pass may have been a little off target, but it didn't look like Akeem Smith was ready to take the ball. Turnover by Southwest. Mobley out to Conwell. Long two, off the heel. Offensive rebound, free throws coming for Cedric Clark. Clark has averaged just 4.8 points per game this season. Season high is eight, but Again, getting a lot of minutes off the bench for the Governors. And that free throw will get him on the score sheet. Clark makes both. Johnson doing pretty well in that area. They're pressuring Southwest again. Southwest breaks the press though and that leaves a wide open Cam Knuckles who sensed his coverage and pulled a little juke there. Langsley out to sheet slide. Conwell back to Sheet. Uh, that was Langsley again. Now there's Sheet Slog. Cedric Clark. Johnson passing around the perimeter. Sheet Slog can't hit the three pointer. Rebound Conwell. Johnson saying, We can play your style too. And again, they are very much an improvisational team. Conwell 
posts up and scores. Johnson applying the pressure again. Now they go back out to their zone. Knuckles tries to break it, draws the foul. Johnson had several to give. The foul will be charged to Sheetschlag. That's his first personal, and there's Caddy with the touch. Finds Cam Ross, but the three-pointer is too strong. Picked up by Cedric Clark. He finds Conwell down low. Ross, losing the handle, scramble, and a foul. Johnson bailing out oh, Southwest oh, there, oh, could have forced a jump ball. Instead, Justin Langsley will be hit with his first personal foul. Akeem Smith to inbound, finds Caddy. Caddy in trouble, and can't get the under over move to work. Conwell, that is a tie up. Johnson with the possession arrow, but a good defensive play by the Lakers. Smith puke out to Mobley. Drains the tray. And Akeem Smith quickly on the other end catches Johnson falling asleep. Conwell, he's hit from behind. That will send him to the line. Johnson was in the bonus anyway. Conwell has worked his way up to nine points. And is the first player to hit double digits. He converts that. Lots of scoring from Johnson and they're not afraid to run up the scoreboard. They've scored over 100 points three times this season. It's a 46-27 game. Caddy, try to no-look pass. It was read perfectly by Smith. Pugh who puts down the jam. Smith Pugh up to 10. Well, that ought to get the college scouts interested in Smith Pugh, uh, really hyped up. Here's the runner, and not able to get the bounce. Akeem Smith, Smith Pugh again with possession. Use up the dribble. Oh, well, thought about a three. <laughs> Johnson getting a lot of looks. Pump fakes the three again, but Johnson once again getting the good ball movement, and it results in another layup for Pierre Conwell. He has flourished inside the paint this afternoon. Another Johnson pick. Smith Pugh finds his open target. Goodbye, Jalen Mobley scoring. This is turning into a clinic in a hurry. Pulling up and getting the bounce is Amon Brodek. That's his first field goal. 52-29 the score in favor of Johnson. Because of Johnson's philosophy, they do have the ability to play several kinds of speeds. 
They like to push the ball, but they don't have any trouble playing against slower paced teams or run and gun teams and Southwest throws the ball away. Washington Smith Pugh races through everybody, but too strong on the layup. It's picked up by AJ Ray. Knuckles out to Akeem Smith, launching the three short. Rebound, Langsley. Sheet slot. Finds Conwell from the corner. Bullseye. Conwell up to 16 points. Southwest on the move again. In trouble. Oh, Southwest getting a huge primer before they start section play, that's for sure. And beating his coverage and getting the lucky bounce is Cam Ross. He's up to 12. Johnson pushing again because they've been doing that the entire half. Why go away from that strategy, but the passing they go off target, Cam Knuckles with the steal, but he was faced a double team, couldn't convert. Pierre Conwell bounce pass over to Smith Pugh, who gets the layup. Smith Pugh up to 12, 33 seconds. Johnson up by 26. Akeem Smith, Southwest isn't gonna hold it. Shot was blocked, dead ball rebound to Johnson. We're hoping to get somebody at halftime to talk about the Turn On The Lights campaign over at Southwest, and if we do, we'll explain that to you a little more, but it's an effort to bring permanent lighting to their football field. Sheet slide, pulls up. Can't get it. Dead ball rebound to Southwest. They will have 7.5 seconds. To try to get something, get some kind of momentum, going into the locker room. Akeem Smith left alone. Pure! Beats the buzzer, but it was all Johnson in the first half. They take a 57-34 lead as we head for the halftime intermission. We'll pause for a moment as we wait to see if we're gonna get somebody to uh, talk about this Turn On The Lights campaign. And then we'll analyze our first half numbers, which skew heavily in Johnson's favor. This is the Twin Cities Boys Basketball Championship here on TSB Television. Welcome back to Minneapolis Southwest High School as we continue our coverage of the Twin Cities Boys Championship game. Yeah, I said that. We've been on. What difference? <laughs> I was going to say the turning point for Johnson they mentioned was the Edina game. They did have one loss to Stillwater, a one-point loss there, but other than that, you know, they ran through the conference and a lot of those losses were to teams they would not contend with later on in the season. Akeem Smith can't hit from three-point range. Johnson is battle-tested and they are ready. Again, that, but Southwest, well, they had one solid run early, but haven't found much since. A.J. Ray missing from three-point range. Conwell with the rebound. Conwell, no, and gets his own cleanup. Brings him up to 18 points. And 
Johnson, the coaching staff, mentioned the loss to Edina as Caddy a little too wild there. Offensive rebound though to A.J. Ray. We'll talk more about that in a moment. With that Johnson loss to Edina, they said they gave themselves a chance to win and that became evident in later games, including that loss to Stillwater. And we're going to have a reach and foul called on Pierre Conwell. And they had some quality wins too. They beat Lodi in a game we covered earlier this season. They were ranked number two in their division over in Wisconsin. Beat Lakeville South to start the year. Lost to Roseville. But they have some quality wins and again, most of their losses to teams they will not have to contend with in the state tournament section. Another foul is called. This time it will go against Southwest. Or was it just an out-of-bounds play? No, it was on Southwest. On A.J. Ray. To get here, Southwest had a very dramatic conference section of their schedule. And that included a one-point win over Minneapolis South as we go back to Southwest direction. That game took place Friday, February 8th. A one-point victory thanks to a couple of back-to-back -back fluky plays. Plays you don't expect, but you don't complain about when they go in your favor. A.J. Ray for three. Off the mark, but rebound going to Conwell. And he's bumped by Caddy. That'll be a second personal foul. Oh, Southwest was down by three points. Caddy was fouled on a three point shot. Makes two of them after the South head coach called a timeout to try to ice him. And there's Caddy with the block there of number three, Jalen Mobley. Southwest on the run. And one for Amon Brodek. We haven't mentioned his name much, but... Thank you. Southwest coaching staff says he does the intangibles, has a high motor, and will go after anything he can get his hands on. Converts a three-point play. Southwest with the steal, thanks to A.J. Ray. Pump faking the three is Brodeck, but he goes off the heel that time, and it's rebounded by Smith Pugh. Smith Pugh, bumps, gets the runner. Bumps his total up to 14. Steal. Well, no, that wasn't a steal. That was just some good heads up play by Johnson. And Southwest turns it over after Ross bounces it off his knee. We may see the mercy rule come into play here. Again, this is a regular season game, so no different than any other Twin Cities event or a regular basketball event, I should say. There's Johnson swinging around the perimeter. They've run this play a couple of times, and it works to perfection once more. Jalen Mobley on the layup. 63-37 in favor of the Governors. Caddy, no. Fight for the rebound, goes to the hands of Langsley, and he's fouled from behind by Brodeck. That will be his first personal. So to finish up the Southwest story, they Caddy was fouled from three, only made two of three. Southwest commits a foul with about five seconds to go. We have a jump ball. Johnson with possession arrow. And then Cam Ross drained the game winner after South split from the free throw line. 
beat the buzzer and provided the most exciting win of the conference. But Southwest overall beating a lot of teams they had not defeated in several years, including Washburn and Henry, which they felt was the high point for them this season. And certainly something to build on for the next few years. Conwell drains the long two. He's been on cue all game, up to 20 points. Closing in on his season high. Cam Ross finding Caddy. Long skip, nearly picked off. Akeem Smith, that was off target. Goes right to Amon Brodeck, but he didn't have great positioning. Once again, though, Southwest getting active on the boards, and a tip leads to a no board for the Lakers. And Brodeck scores off the no-look dish from Ross. And Conwell once again baseline drive. This time it doesn't fall. One of the few miscues for Conwell today. Caddy pulls up and gets the bounce. Give him three. Actually, they call it a did they call it a three? No, they called it a two, but still an impressive shot. Langsley fouled from behind. Foul is charged to Cam Ross as first personal. That will send Langsley to the line. Justin Langsley, not too many points this season, just three and a half a game. But Johnson really has three playmakers on offense when it comes to scoring, but they certainly will take a balanced approach as they've been getting today. Langsley missing both free throws. Southwest in transition. Good. Cam Ross. He's been the hot hand for the Lakers today. And a foul is charged to Johnson. That will send Brodeck to the line once more. So let's turn on the lights campaign. We mentioned we couldn't get someone for halftime as I thought, but Southwest looking to get permanent field lighting for their soccer and football teams. Looking to raise $300,000, so they have started a fundraising drive to reach that amount, to have that equipment installed on their fields. Minneapolis, not all of their football fields have permanent lighting, so you get a lot of daytime football and soccer games, and they'd like to change that. Sheet slot getting his first field goal of the day and has a chance for a three-point play. Sheets log a starter, but not too active on the scoreboard. 5.2 points per game, but as we said, Johnson taking contributions, big and small, from their starters and bench players. They don't believe in having one player do all the work. It's a collaborative effort. Sheets log completes a three-point play. Johnson up by 24. Caddy for three, he's fouled. He will shoot three. We mentioned at the open, Caddy leading the team in scoring at 15.7 points per game. Coaching staff says he's always the first person to show up for practice and the last person to leave. And not once has he complained. Very much a statue. He may have emotions inside, but refuses to express them. Wants to keep the focus on the game and getting the team a victory. Caddy is their do-everything kind of player. And his mindset certainly 
will be looked upon next year when he graduates and his younger brethren take command of this team. Johnson losing the ball there, Southwest. Looking to make another charge here. They have a lot of work to do with 12 minutes to play. But you're not seeing Johnson pull back. A.J. Ray still can't hit it from three-point range and the rebound going to Robert Chetard. Johnson pushing once more and they push another pair for Sheets Law. Inbound pressure successful, but a double dribble violation on Smith Pugh. You don't see Johnson backing off, and partly because, again, this is the last game of the season before section playoffs start. So after this, it's a single elimination. In other words, you only have 36 minutes to tune up and get ready for the playoff push. Cam Knuckles left that bunny short. Johnson on the move again. Mitchell McDonald gets the kiss off the glass. And every Johnson player that is now taking the floor has scored. Cam Knuckles runs into traffic, and Sheesh Log was waiting for him. The charge will be called. Langsley, Conwell, and Kirk all going in for the Governors. Conwell doesn't like what he sees, so he backs off. Smith Pugh for three. Yes. <laughs> 17 points for Smith Pugh. Caddy for the answer, off the heel. AJ Ray with an offensive rebound. And then he goes off the heel as well. Conwell with the rebound. Pull from behind by Ray. Now he's left alone. Look out. <laughs> Not quite the vertical for a dunk, but he'll get the roll. And he gets on the board. Smith Pugh, again from three point range, off the shot clock, and that's automatically out of bounds. So a dead ball rebound to Southwest. You mentioned Southwest beating Henry. They clobbered them in their second meeting of the season, 76 49, after Henry won the first time around. Split, well, got split with Washburn as well. And there's Amon Brodek with the mid-range J. And looking at their schedule, the only other section opponent they played was Minnetonka, and that was a 20-point loss. Outside of that, they stayed away from six and six and four A, so they don't. There's one thing that may go against them: it's inexperience against their section opponents. But there's Southwest driving the tempo, and Cam Ross getting the layup. 16 points for Cam Ross, and it's 75-53 in favor of Johnson. In a game that has been pretty much even after Johnson started the game on a 23-3 advantage. Conwell for three, bullseye. Timeout, St. Paul Johnson. Conwell up to 23 points. Johnson, as we mentioned, getting a lot of looks at their section opponents because three of them are in the same conference, Harding Highland and Central. We mentioned they split the season series with Central. They beat Highland twice, including that seven point win at Johnson to win the right to play in this Twin Cities championship. 
And they dispatched Harding easily both times in their meeting. Beyond that, didn't face anybody in their section. But they did play Richfield into a two-point victory. That could be a potential matchup in state. But outside of this conference, they really stayed away from their section as well. Cam Ross is fouled, he'll shoot two. Foul is called the Chetard. And Cam Ross, the hot hand, 13.3 points per game this season, season high 26. He splits there. Picked up by Chittard. Mitchell McDonald on the drive, and he'll be called for the elbow. Both teams now out of fouls to give, but Johnson with a 24-point lead looks to be comfortably ahead now. And Southwest turns it over off the inbound play. Johnson inbounds underneath their own basket. Conwell cleans up and scores. 25 points for Pierre Conwell. Johnson on the move again after the interception and it's Sheedslog with the layup in transition. Ross for three, no. Offensive rebound by Tyler Porch, and he'll draw the foul. No, jump ball, Southwest with a possession arrow. Here's Ross again, can't hit the roll. Can't drain the floater, I should say. And here's Smith Pugh on the run. And we've seen that play a few times. Johnson pedaling on the accelerator here. They're up by 30. And Knuckles losing the ball once again. Unable to control it. Johnson's gonna win this one, that's pretty clear by now. They'll move up to 18 and seven on the year unless something really bizarre takes place. Southwest will fall to 15 and 12. And seeing this Johnson team, they may be an underdog in the class three bracket with the likes of De La Salle, but they are ready for state tournament play. Cantrell Kirk score for Johnson. And Amon Brodek on the other end for Southwest. Mitchell McDonald left alone. Missing the three-pointer. And the offensive rebound to Smith Pugh. Cam Knuckles going for the steal and he almost came up with it. Good athleticism on his end, but came up a little bit short. Sometimes bringing a winning culture is not an immediate task. It takes a lot of time to build up such a program. Southwest hoping to get in that direction again. They've already improved on their win total and will finish above 500 no matter what happens. Cam Knuckles will go to the line. Yeah. 
So already something positive to build on for Southwest. How far they can build, though, is the question. Cam Knuckles averaging five points per game this season. Season high is 10. Both teams in the bonus at this point. New player in for Southwest, that's Terrell Sampson, number 32. There's Smith Pugh beating his coverage. He can get dunks, he can get layups, he can hit from long range. He has just demonstrated every possible facet on offense today in terms of shooting touch. Caddy used up his dribble, gets the lucky bounce again. Timeout is called. Called by Southwest with 6.23 left. And this may be to get some more reserves in because the outcome is certainly decided and this game again having no implications on section or state tournament seating and I will say this this is perhaps the most eccentric if not unique soundtrack I have heard in all the high schools I've visited this season I've play heard many different Songs I normally don't hear in, in high school facilities. You're hearing Mana Mana right now from the Muppet Show. They had the Star Wars theme earlier, the Superman theme, both conducted by John Williams. If they're looking to get attention, they certainly have mine. Southwest Gym, as you notice, is a little small, even though it's a 4A school, because uh, we weren't sure about a spectator gym when it first opened, and getting the role is Cedric Clark back in 1956, and so they'd have to basically start over if they were going to get a new gym. So they can't expand. Cam Knuckles is rejected by Smith Pugh. It will stay with Southwest. But bigger, small, we're always thrilled to take a part in this annual inner city event. We should mention the mercy roll limit is 35 and we're past the nine minute mark of the second half. So if Johnson gets a few more baskets here, we will go to that. AJ Ray, or no, that was Terrell Sampson making the hook shot. Smith Pugh dumps it off to Conwell, who drains the tray. That matches a season high. Caddy was blocked, but Johnson touched it last. Here come the reserves. It looks like Conwell and Smith Pugh have done their job. We may not see them again, but with 528, who knows? Terrell Sampson again, no. He's been certainly aggressive on the glass though. And the foul is called against Johnson. New player in for the Governors. It's number 52, Justice Murphy. He gets called for the foul. One-on-one -on -one situation here for Terrell Sampson. Comes up empty though. Scoring for Johnson was Sheetslog. Brings him up to nine. More substitutions now as Johnson forcing another turnover off the inbound play, so they're not abandoning their philosophy, even though they have the, clearly a win pocketed in their book. 95-61 the score. 
I guess the question is, will Johnson break the century mark for the fourth time this season? Not that it means much, but certainly something to watch for. That was a little too wild there. Foul is called, one-on-one -on -one situation for Johnson. Malik Jones has stepped in the game now for the Governors. Mitchell McDonald going back in. Southwest also sending in some more reserves here. Marquise Graves, number three. One on one. Free throws not going in for the reserves at this point. Graves with his first shot, but he comes up short. Dead ball rebound to Johnson with 434 remaining in regulation. And Johnson doing more cleanup work. We're now in the Mercy Rule range. Cantrell Kirk scores, so the clock will run from this point on. Demetrius Caddy will shoot a pair. So this game will wrap up most likely in the next four minutes. A decent game for Caddy, but they really couldn't get him going early on, and that was one reason why Johnson pulled away quickly in this contest. Certainly not the dramatic scenes we have seen in previous Twin Cities games where Johnson and Washburn seemed like they were trading close victories with each other. But Some good plays here by Southwest. Cam Knuckles scoring. Yeah, it brings them up to seven. If they go back within under 30 here, they would stop the clock again. I'm not sure we'll get to that point, but we're seeing Southwest putting together some fine plays here, just not enough of them to really hang around with Johnson. Johnson under no pressure to really force the ball up there. Now they do. Justice Murphy unable to score though. Here's Demetrius Caddy with a little stutter step. And he gets his own rebound on top of it. He'll be going to some colleges. And with the block is Cedric Clark. And speaking of colleges, hang on. Traveling violation. Cantrell Kirk cannot get the bucket there. And I'm not sure Johnson will get to the century mark here. Coming in for the Lakers, Max Utes, number 40. Like Washing Smith Pugh also getting several looks. He's preferring, or he could get a preferred walk on role at uh, North Dakota State. Has several NAIA schools looking at him and Division II as well. So, not a high rank prospect, but he certainly could get a scholarship offer if he wishes. Johnson not abandoning their philosophy of pushing the ball. But you see the, the reserves not quite having the same finesse that the starters do. We've been stuck at 97.65 for a while. Max Utes pulls up. No good. Rebound to Malik just Malik Jones. Mitchell McDonald is rejected by Amon Brodek. And here comes Amon Brodek over <laughs> getting the pass from Caddy and Brodek goes up to 15. So the clock would stop, I believe, because we're within 30 points now, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's a done deal regardless. So let's see what Johnson decides to do. Again, they will be favorites to repeat as state tournament champions. They do not call a foul there. Justice Murphy will score. 
And St. Paul Johnson will get one more major victory before they prepare for section battle. Again, they play South St. Paul in the first round and could face one of their conference foes again for the right to play in state. Southwest has a tough task in their section. Demetrius Caddy hits the NBA range three. That brings him up to 20 for the game. Steal off the inbound play by Brodeck. Can he add two more? Yes, he will. So Southwest getting a couple of last jabs in there. Johnson will drive one more time. It's Clark, he's off the mark. And that should be all this game wrote. Southwest will run out the clock here. St. Paul Johnson wins 99-72. They cannot break the century mark for the fourth time this season. They've come close a couple of times this year, but I don't think they care too much. They get one more victory and improve their record to 18-7 heading into the playoffs. Southwest will finish the regular season at 15-12. As we mentioned, they have a tall order ahead of them as they will play Edina in the first round of section play at Edina. But uh, both teams have that upset potential. For Southwest, it would be more likely in their section than in state, but who knows if you can get a few bounces going your way. Let's recap the final numbers for you before we wrap up. Pierre Conwell matching a season high with 28 points to lead all players. Behind him, Quashing smith Pugue with 21 points for St. Paul Johnson. And Cantrell Kirk finished with 10 to round out the double-digit scores. You had Sietzleg and Mobley coming in with 9. For Southwest, leading score ended up being Demetrius Caddy with 20 points. Cam Ross with 17 points. Amon Brodek matching that total. Akeem Smith and Cam Knuckles both coming in with 7 points apiece. That wraps up our coverage of this game and for the basketball season. We certainly hope you enjoyed our coverage this year as we ventured in the high definition realm for the first time. We'll have more coverage for you later on this spring. Of course, we'll get some finals coverage for you at the state tournaments and we hope to have some Minnesota machine football for you in the WFA, but I certainly enjoyed this journey and covering the city teams frequently, and I certainly hope you enjoyed our coverage as well as we prepped you as much as possible for state tournament time. For everyone here at TSB Television who helped us out throughout the season from the start to the finish, I'm Mike Peenan. Thank you for watching, and enjoy the spring.